day for the Acoustic Neuroma Association. Um, I actually have many friends that um, have um, had an acoustic neuroma and as a result end up wearing a bone conduction hearing device. Um, so um, I, I know somewhat about that. Um, my daughter, she was born with hearing loss, but her hearing loss is a conductive hearing loss. She was actually born with what's called microtia and aural atresia. So she was, she was born missing her right ear. Her ear's gone and, she, and her ear canal did not develop. And so the bone conduction um, option as a hearing device helps vibrate the sound into her middle and inner ear. So that's how she and many individuals just like her are able to hear um, with the technology today. But um, I'm the founder and executive director of the Ear Community Organization. I founded Ear Community after Allie was born um, because when she was born, you know, as a mom, I was a little surprised uh, that her ear was missing and I, I was good during my pregnancy and I, I didn't understand like what happened. And I blamed myself thinking, you know, did I do something that maybe I didn't know I drank or ate during my pregnancy? How could this happen? I didn't even know, my family didn't realize someone could be born without ears. Um, and so we went to all of the doctors and because my crochet and aural atresia is somewhat rare, it's approximately one out of 6,000 births um, in the US. Um, so that's about 550 births per year. And uh, break it down even further, it's about 60,000 people in the US, young and old, living with microtia and aural atresia. And for those of you who are fans of Paul Stanley of the rock band Kiss, <laughs> Their guitarist, he actually has the same right ear my daughter has. He was born with microtia and aural atresia, but you'd never know it with the hair covering. Um, so when Allie was born, we went to all the doctors. We just couldn't find the answers that we were looking for. Um, you know, no one could explain to us why this happened. Was it my fault? Is it genetic? Um, and we also asked about a hearing device. We had inquired about what type of hearing device she may need because surely, surely she must be having troubles hearing. And we were actually told she's got one good ear, that's good enough, and she's not a candidate for a cochlear implant. Well, um, we went home with this information thinking it was good information, and later on I went back online a month or two later and discovered a bone conduction hearing aid the hearing device my child needed. We were not told about this device. And mm -hmm. so um, <clears throat> I found a couple, <clears throat> excuse me, of support groups online. <clears throat> and they were just, um, just people chit-chatting, um, not a lot of information. But I did realize that a lot of people had the same questions that my family had. And I couldn't understand why no one had these answers. Mm -hmm. So I founded Ear Community. And um, we have support groups, we have five of them on Facebook, uh, we have Twitter, we have uh, Instagram, we have our website, and it's a community that's evolved, that's connected families with medical professionals. And so at our events, we're able to just bring these families together, the children can see each other, including adults. Most of these individuals have never met someone like themselves ever in their life that's missing one or both ears and they often feel very alone. So our events are free, we make it fun for the day, we educate them, we have ENTs and plastic surgeons there in their area and of course all of the hearing device um, companies including prosthetic ears. Um, so we want to offer all options because uh, many of the medical facilities don't have everything. Um, there's always a, a contract or something involved and your community wants everyone to know what all their options are. So this year, your community turned 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I believe I've been doing this for a decade already. Allie will be 11 on Wednesday next week. <laughs> and so um, why I've been invited today is to speak with you about Allie's Act. Um, Allie's Act is a piece of legislation that has recently been introduced by Congressman Jonah Goose. This um, act was introduced last December, and of course, they wanted to name it after Allie, my daughter. And what Allie's Act would ensure is many of us struggle getting hearing device coverage, especially through 
these are all the insurance companies that are compliant with the Affordable Care Act. So it's, it's so many of them. I don't even know who all exists, but between your HMOs, your PPOs, and the big guys, Cigna, United Healthcare, Aetna, Kaiser, um, all of these companies, um, many families are often denied coverage for these devices. Um, sometimes um, some of the example responses from the hearing device companies are that these devices are cosmetic, where they're not a real device. Um, and it's very frustrating when I don't think the insurance companies even understand that, for example, in many of our cases and in my daughter's, a bone conduction hearing device is the only option. Um, and in fact, in our case, we have no ears. We have no ear to put anything in or on. So a bone conduction device is the only device they can not only benefit with because of their specific hearing loss, but a way to wear the device. And so there's a lot of um, just vague information that I think insurance companies don't even have, if very little. So Allie's Act would help ensure that private insurers would cover cochlear implants and bone anchored hearing devices. And what they would cover is, first of all, this would be a nationwide bill. This is a national level bill. Um, just to educate you real quick, um, there are currently 26 states that have hearing device insurance plans in place. And of those 26 states, not all of them have insurance coverage for bone anchor hearing aids. So just because they have a hearing aid plan in place does not mean they cover OSSEO integrated devices, which are the cochlear implants and bone anchored hearing devices. And so this national level bill would cover every state. Every state would benefit from the services. And what those services are, and this is a loaded bill, we're very excited. This bill would cover not only the, the device itself, but it would cover an upgrade for the device every five years. It would cover services for the device, such as a one ENT year appointment, um, one appointment with your audiologist for the fitting activation and programming. We would also cover it for accessories. There are microphones, um, just different needs, different extensions of the device that many of us use along with the hearing aid. And it would cover oral therapies. And it would also cover, well, and oral therapies would be your choice of speech therapy, ASL, um, cued speech. But also it would cover um, just if you want surgery, it will cover the cost of the surgery and those post-operative care appointments. So this is a loaded bill. And right now our bill is actually doing really well. It's been moving along through the house. And um, I was telling Ginny, um, we have some very exciting news that will be coming very soon, but I can let you know a little bit of where that's headed. Um, very soon here, we are hopeful that Ali's Act will also be introduced to the Senate. So Allies Act will be going through both the House and the Senate. And um, when the bill goes through the uh, Senate, it's called a companion bill. It's basically the same bill as Allies Act. But um, we're very excited. We look forward to an announcement um, coming very soon when that companion bill will be introduced. And um, as we were talking with before, in the June newsletter that um, the organization receives, Allie is in here. And here she is, she's on page nine. And so um, the Acoustic Neuroma Association was so kind to do a story on my daughter. And um, this all started because my daughter, she wrote to Congressman Goose during Better Speech and Hearing Month, <laughs> asking him to help her advocate better for hearing loss. And um, he heard us and he listened. And as a result, we have a piece of legislation in place. And so in your newsletter, it tells a little bit about that. And it also goes back over the services that the bill will provide. And it has a link um, here to go to on your website. And through that link, it has lots of helpful information. It's basically the same information that's on your community's page as well. But what to do and what we're asking anyone to do, this could be family, friends, um, an individual who wears these devices, doctors, anybody, teachers of the deaf, you can write to your local congressman and congresswoman asking them to co-sponsor this bill. Everyone's voice matters here. And we finally have a piece of legislation in place that would help. And by the way, this bill would cover age birth through 64. Because state level bills 
they stop often at age 18 or 24 or 26. They don't often go higher than that or cover, um, you know, adults for coverage. And um, to me, it seems insane that um, anyone would possibly think that when your child becomes an adult and hits the age of 24 or 26, that their hearing loss just improves, goes away, or gets better. We need these devices throughout adulthood before Medicaid would kick in. Mm -hmm. And so this bill would cover again from birth zero, age zero to 64. And so we're very excited about that. Um, so probably January, our bill will be reintroduced again as we start a new year. And again, we welcome all of those letters, as many letters as possible. We have example uh, boilerplate template letters. And I believe the ANA actually, um, someone forwarded this to me, it was great. Someone put together a great template letter mm -hmm. and I think it's on your site, mm -hmm. um, but it's amazing. Just the letter's already done, it's easy. Put in your name and your address and information and get it mailed off. And again, you can ask friends, family, anybody, anyone can write in support of these devices and for individuals like ourselves and our children that need them. So I'm not sure how many of you have had troubles and difficulty with insurance, but I think we all know dealing with insurance is, is a challenge itself. And um, these devices not only help people get their lives back, but in many cases, it, these devices give them their lives back. When you have sensory neural hearing loss, you lose hearing loss overnight, um, or whether you're an individual that was born deaf, um, these devices are also our arms and legs and eyes. And so it's beyond me why insurance doesn't seem to recognize that in many family situations. So, Allie's Act, bill number HR 5485. We're very excited and um, our community is your community. We're all involved together. The ANA has endorsed Allie's Act. They wrote a beautiful letter, very passionate and um, you know, in full support of this bill because so many of us have been there. We, we know that it's not easy to get these devices and, and we need them and we deserve them and the technology is available. So why be denied them?